we have got, I've got to confess, there's been a bit of a mess up over times because we were meant to be doing a round table with Medina, who is in Australia, Bryce at Atlanta, myself in the UK, and David, who's in Perth, David Cohen, who's in Perth, Australia. But because the American and UK clocks have changed, we've sprung forward, these bloody clock changes <laughs> on Australia haven't, we've all got the times mixed up. So instead of our normal round table, the three of us are just going to do a quick sort of um, little update for you all about where we're all at with our channels. And then we will reschedule and get David on board. Um, so let's go around. Let's go around for the news. Let's start with you, Bryce, because Bryce has got some really exciting news to share about a really exciting interview she did this morning. Well, today is my day of Australians. Um, of course, we're missing David. <laughs> um, this morning, early this morning, which was late for you guys in Australia, I filmed with Tamara and Ricardo Bozzi. And I kept it really quiet. I told Catherine because I, I didn't know, you know, you never know. Um, and I'm so, it was such an incredible conversation. And I mean, he's just, I mean, I love Australians anyway. I always just have such a soft spot in my heart for Australians. But he was... I, and I told him in the interview, like, even as a non-Australian, I look at him as a leader in this movement, just for humans anyway. The way a lot of people outside of, of America looked to Mr. T um, as a leader in this great awakening. And so, and one thing I was telling Catherine that I loved about Ricardo Bozzi is, and I'm paraphrasing, guys, you'll have to watch the full interview, so I'm not quoting him verbatim, but he talked about how, like, right now we're so focused on, you know, collapsing the old system, that we also have to plan for the new one as well. You know, we, we can't just, because then what, what do we do? The best is yet to come, but we have to create that best. And, um, and we all have to be involved in that. And I think that's something Catherine and I, we've talked about a lot, is that it's not, just, it's not just handing the ball over to another leader, because that's what got us in the mess we were in in the first place. It's all of us being actively involved in our communities and helping create um, a new governmental system um, that's going to be fair and that's going to allow people to prosper in their God-given freedoms and rights. And um, and so that's really exciting. I really liked that he brought that up uh, because that is that's our responsibility as humans is, is to make sure. Um, he said something funny too, which I thought was awesome that especially in Australia, like what's going on in y'all's capital, that the teenagers need to be recording this because in 50 years time, they're going to be the ones to, to keep on telling the stories of what humanity did. And I thought that was amazing to keep. And I had the other, the other day I was in the bath and I thought I should get a journal. I should start journaling again about all of this just to have it written down um, what we all experienced. And so that interview is up. Um, it's on the full interview is obviously on my Rumble page, but there is an intro on the YouTube channel. So you can just click to the link over over to Rumble to get the full conversation. Uh, with Ricardo Bozzi and Tamara. And they are there um, at the state, at the capital of Australia doing what they're doing and God bless them. And as far as other things happening on my channel next week, we're going to be finishing up our first Magdalene book. That has been a huge success, that series. And we're going to be starting the new Magdalene book, which is the Magdalene manuscript. That's going to get a little bit racy because it talks about sex. So <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> so, that who come in? <laughs> Looking forward to that one. <laughs> I'm talking about sex. So, um, but yeah, that's really exciting because we. This is what we were going to talk about our round table tonight, which we'll yes. probably do next week. Now is all about solutions, and all of us, and David included, were really, really focused on now moving forward into the creation. Of course, we're still keeping up to date with what's going on because knowledge is power, but we're really all focused on the solution side of things. So, Medina, we dragged you up very early in the morning. Um, how are you? What, what's happening with your channel and what you're working on at the moment? Sure. Well, um, I've got some uh, protection workshops that I've been offering. I did one a couple of weeks ago for people with beautiful... Um, invocations and prayers and and also clearings for, for your energy so you know we're, we're all being very impacted by the, the the global energies as well as our own individual energies and so to be able to clear our energies at the moment is really important and to to be able to sort of um release the baggage that you know we're collecting along the way mm. and so these protection workshops help with that which is fantastic um 
And so that, 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 that was, uh, you know, some wonderful um, testimonials from that, you know, from people that, that have now skills that they didn't have before that they can utilise through this time period and, you know, in an ongoing way. So I'm offering that again in a couple of weeks, which is really exciting. And um, continuing, you know, with my global clientele, which is great. We, we are just um, currently at the moment getting more uh, rains here in like I remember the last time I spoke to you was was sort of around the same time and and um, the, the, the rains are really coming down. Again, you know, bioengineered is, is what it looks like. Um, Rob Deutsch does some wonderful weather reports on the, on the manip manipulations that are happening with the weather. And um, so, you know, there, there are more um, uh, evacuations in Lismore again at the moment and, and the rains are coming down really heavily. So, um, you know, just... Um, more prayers to to australia would be great i really really love the concept too that with with all this um weather weather um um manipulation that's happening that we can actually really contribute to to shifting that so we can send the water beautiful energy um we can send it energy to to cleanse so we can send it energy to to not harm people we can send it energy to bring love and bring um um, and bring, you know, the, the energies that we need to, to move forward and, and to be able to as well, you know, with the shaman, you know, in the Native American Indians, they would rain dance when they needed rain. Well, in the same way, we can ask the rain to only um, come to us in ways that benefit us, you know. So we can also work with water in that way. And I think that's a really important message to, to give to people that we can, we can also program the water in the way that we want it to be working with us. So um, I think if people have that message, you know, that they're not stuck in the victim consciousness with everything that's going on, thinking, you know, this is being done to us, we can actually, we're very, very empowered and water holds so much energy, you know, as the um, Masara Omoto, the Japanese um, um, the fellow spoke about who, who wrote the, the book, The Secret um, or The Hidden Meaning of Water. He talked about, you know, how we can program water really easily. So I think that's a really important thing to say, that we, we are empowered and we can um, influence very strongly what's happening here as well, you know, with our energy. We are more empowered than the dark. The light is stronger than the dark. So I, th I think that's, that's a really good thing to get across. Um, and so... In terms of my community, um, I want to continue working with energetically with, with what's happening um, in Australia and, and globally. And um, probably I'm thinking about starting a Patreon community. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And Patreon. Patreons are great. I love my Patreons. My Patreons have kept me going. So we love you, Patreon. Have you had that for a long time, Bryce? Yeah, have I have. And they yes. literally are my rock stars because, P I mean, Everybody watching, I mean, people are very kind. And um, so, yeah. And people, yeah. I think, I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think a lot of people understand how much energy we put into our channels, which it is a full-time job, you know. Oh, 100%. It's so much work. Um, can I say, Bryce, too, this is really exciting. Um, we had a, I had a comment on my comment section saying that I should do a chat with your lovely friend Taylor, Taylor Moon. And so <laughs> we, did, we did a... And I listened to that because I read all the comments. And, and so we did this chat and we got such beautiful comments from it. Um, you know, it was really lovely. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that was very exciting. Great, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for Good putting me in touch with you too. Okay. Yes. Good yes. idea. That's something I've been thinking of but haven't got round to because, um, I've do, yeah, I've got lots of exciting things coming on my channel. Um, having a real... Um, change in focus and so if my channel really reflects like both of yours do where I am on a personal level and the journey that I'm moving forward to so I've spent the last sort of two years very much on a journey of discovery and I liken it to almost going through the grief cycle where we're all moving through the cycle of all these emotions but we're moving through at our own pace in our own time and that's exactly the way it should be so for me, I'm so long as it doesn't get deleted again, because <laughs> I've already lost one channel. So I'm being very careful now and putting the more contentious stuff on Rumble. But what I'm doing is this is almost like my journal. I'm I'm using it as my journal and as sort of a reference point for what 
a normal person is going through and sort of being, you know, which all of us are very open and honest about our emotions, about what we're feeling. So I'm so excited to really be solution focused. Yes, I am keeping up to date with what's going on because knowledge is power, but I'm very much then helping to just offer up for people to take or leave as it resonates with them or doesn't different solutions. So I'm halfway through, which I sort of got the idea from Bryce's, my book club on manifesting. And that's just been received really, really well. And what I do is it's like where I'm really focusing, bringing these things more into my life, like Bryce and I are doing the meditation series and we've got a really exciting episode. We had a lovely one last week with Nick Alvia and we've got one coming up very shortly with Sean Stone, which is going to be amazing. Um, so people sharing their different ways and what's working for them and their gifts. And I am reactivating the health side of things because the natural health and, and working in harmony with nature for humans and animals and all the natural remedies. So I've spent years developing formulas to make my natural soaps, my natural gels, my natural ointments, all the healing things. I've got courses already available for using those with dogs and horses. And I'm really bringing i've been been doing a lot of work over the last month really working with some amazing new people because what i'm combining is bringing the natural solutions with moving forward to support the ethical companies that are going to help us move forward to our new future because i strongly believe that you know money is just a form of energy and therefore where we choose to put that energy is giving a very clear effort, a message to the universe in terms of this is what we want moving forward as opposed to continuing with the old habits of spending which might be supporting companies that we don't really want to be moving forward unless they transform. Yeah, I think that that is such a great point. You know, we've got to really think about which are the big corporations. Are we going to support those, the ones that are crushing all the small businesses and, you know, making these um, billion upon billion dollar profits, you know? And um, I think if, if everything that we buy, we, we, we take it back to the core root of, of where that money is going, I think that that's super important. And, and I have the same impetus as you, Catherine, that, I'm really focused again on, on solutions and health solutions. So I'm, I'm also just starting a, a an, um, soul evolution series. So working on um, how we can work with our soul to to really um, work with the energies and go in the flow of the energy so that we can work toward our own ascension. I mean, the number one thing that we really all should be focusing on the minute is our own soul growth, our own soul evolution, how, you know, we're incarnated in this reality because it actually accelerates our growth as a soul because of the density. We, we can actually accomplish more. So this is the key opportunity in this moment as well to ride the wave of the ascension and 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 utilize these energies that are so about change so about you know transforming who we are and 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 so my evolution series is is a whole range of ways that we can do that so i just want to mention that as well it's amazing kind of a, i was telling Catherine before we were filming i put something about this on twitter but i don't think people thought i was serious um i've been microdosing for like a week now and it's actually, um, I think I'm going to do this for a really long time because it's um, like homeopathic. So you just have a small amount of some very small amounts of um, yeah. very small amounts. So I will admit mm -hmm. I've had my fun with large amounts, um, <laughs> very spiritual experiences with large amounts. I think some trees talked to me last time I did that, but I haven't done it in a very long time. And um, we actually had talked to, uh, good look, Nick from Good Lion TV about the he did a whole thing on like DMT and all that kind of stuff and so I watched his documentary and I was the clip of Joe Rogan talking about this I was like you know I'm gonna I'm gonna try this I'm just gonna so many people I we have a friend here in Atlanta who's like 90 year old grandmother is doing it so I was like I'm gonna try this and so I it's very very tiny amount nothing happy you don't you don't see anything you you're very fun you function like normal but what it's done for me I mean, the last four months have been really brutal. Um, and I didn't realize, you know, we get stuck in these little habits, these patterns. And I didn't realize that I was stuck in like a survival mode. 
And mm. I hadn't actually allowed myself because my brain was in survival mode. I had not allowed myself to really sit back into the sorrow of everything that had happened. And what's mm. happened this weekend was all of a sudden it relaxed my brain enough to actually be able to sit into that and actually cry. Um, mm -hmm. And it was very releasing and very cathartic. And, you know, this is, it, it, and I said to somebody, it's almost like if you've ever, I mean, I've done it before, before I really understood how bad pharmaceuticals were. If you've taken like an antidepressant or something, it kind of gives you the same type of um, feeling, but it's natural and it, it, it relaxes it. Well, it doesn't, I don't know if it relaxes the brain, it opens the brain more. And so you're perceiving things in a little bit different of a way that's really healing. It's very, it's been very healing. And so many people I've read, um, articles that people have written, I've listened to interviews that have people who've really benefited from, from doing this, from microdosing. And I know a lot of people who even struggle with headaches, migraine headaches will do it just for that alone. So I want to make that clear. It doesn't, you know, you're still functioning. You're not, nothing really shifts as far as you're not partying, you know, you're not like at a fish concert, dirt twirling all day. Like it's, it's very, um, that's what we say in the United States, dirt twirling the noodlers, you know, the, the dirty hippies <laughs> at the fish concerts. Um, but, but you're, you're able to maintain your life and work and drive and do everything else. It's just, it's given you more of a, your brain, more of a way to kind of like settle into itself more. Um, and so Where can people maybe look up that and get more information on that for us if they're interested. Well, um, again, our friend Nick from Good Lion TV, the DMT documentary he did also talks about microdosing as well. Um, there's a right. lot of, re of resources out there. I'm not like the connoisseur when it comes to psychedelics. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm not. <laughs> um, um, but, um, but, but you can find a lot of stuff out there that will tell it's tiny, The it's like the size, the amount you take every day is like the size of a dime in the United States. Dimes are like the smallest coin we have. It's about the size of what sure. you take. You just chew it up and, and eat it in the morning. And, you know, you don't like how you pack it. Do I? Yeah, because you have you have a tiny amount with homeopathics to to be able to create the immunity um, to to be able to deal with things. So it's the same sort of concept. It's the same sort, but with homeopathics, you haven't got any of the actual substance left in it. You've got the energetic signature coming back to the Dr. Emoto. It's similar to that. So it's yeah, yeah it's fascinating. And I'm just all for these people to just really you know grasping what nature has to offer, and it's really important this subject of recognizing where you are at as an individual mm. and what you need right here, right now. And, and so if I've been doing a similar sort of processing of, um, you know, every, I think everyone who's watching this, we're all going through our stages of having to let go of certain things and process everything that might be going with that and welcome in making yeah. space for the new. And we were again talking about this, before when we were waiting um, with the time change mess up um, <laughs> you know, about how it's such a cliche that you need to create the space in your life to allow new things of whatever it might be to come in. And um, it's so, so important because when you do let go of what no is no longer serving you, however painful or not that process might be, it's amazing, isn't it, Bryce, what comes mm -hmm. in to fill the gaps? And the universe, I mean, I was telling Catherine before, I mean, I really feel very blessed, even though I've been through hell and back, I do feel very blessed by the universe. Like I, I have a really great life and things are just, I'm really relaxed and things are just coming in and it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's, but I'll tell you guys funny. <laughs> so when I, the first day I did it, it'd been like two hours since I did it. And I was actually sitting on my yoga mat and I was like texting everybody. I was like, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. And I was like, you're not supposed to. So I was actually expecting to have like, to start, you have this like real groovy experience, but everyone's like, you're, you're not supposed to feel anything. Like it's a micro dose. So I was like literally <laughs> waiting. I was like, come on, come on. Good analogy for what we've all been doing on a global scale. You yeah. know, how much of the conversation over the last year and a half, two years has revolved around When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? So it's so yeah. fascinating when we look, uh, and, and we will be carrying on, folks, with this discussion where we get David on board when we reschedule, of how much of what we're doing in our own individual journeys are obviously a reflection because we are all connected and we are together. We all create. 
the mm-hmm. world. And I, I can't, I can't but help mention when we talk about, you know, we've been waiting, waiting, waiting for disclosure. Didn't we just have it yesterday when Fox News released that the, the, the report on, you know, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, is it actually here? You know, where um, they were talking about, you know, the mass arrests and everything. And, and I thought it's like, you know, you're waiting, waiting, and then you, it actually something happens and you think, am I imagining this? You know, it's a tiny percentage of people that see that. Well, right. because we're all in. Pardon? Well, I think it's kind of like the microdosing too. Like when you do the big, yeah. big one, yeah, yeah. the big yeah. one, you know, where you're yeah. seeing colors, it's a big hit. But like I was waiting for that big hit, but no, real healing comes in tiny increments. And that's what, so it's all, you can say the micro of microdosing, the micro of microdosing, mirroring the macro where it is micro too, where it's slowly things are coming slow and the slowly, you know, and that, and it's creating that. Cause I mean, let's, we can just take it to a real simple level, you know, like when people want to go on a diet to lose weight or lose weight, sorry, Robbie's very excited right now. I don't know if you can hear that. He's the sheriff. He, he sheriffs everybody that walks by. Um, when people go to lose weight, right. When you drop weight really quickly, um, it comes back fast, right. But if it's a slow process, it stays off because better habits are being established that are going to be more permanent. And, and I think that's where the patience comes in, where we have to be very patient with uh, the macro as well as the micro. And I think from that patience oh. is working on the micro. That's one of my main lessons in this lifetime, patience, patience, because when you, when you see yourself as a spiritual, eternal being and you've been in all the other, you know, cosmic areas and you've been able to manifest like that, you know, boom, oh, <laughs> I can manifest, you know, that quickly and you come here and it's so dense and so slow and it's this 3D reality that you're trawling through. Oh, my God, isn't that lesson patience for so many people? It's It's... Just to, to and, and I think it's getting quicker now to manifest, like it is getting much more instantaneous than it was, but such a lesson in this lifetime to be able to, to just release in non-attachment the things that we want and trust that they'll come in in divine alignment. Oh, my God, that's such a big one. <laughs> I yeah. think that, you know, part of what a society has not served us is this instant gratification looking to and how much do you miss so when i i live in the beautiful sandy woodland and it's just amazing so when i walk slowly the amount of wildlife i see just in the sand and i'm not talking about the snakes and the lizards i'm talking about the different types of ants the different types of bugs you don't have snakes do you catherine you do have you snakes have... we have oh, snakes. Really? okay oh, but only two it. yeah oh lucky you we've got like <laughs> Yeah, but you know, but when when how much you miss when you rush through life, and and I've been my friends used to say that they put hurry up on my gravestone because I was always in a rush to everything because everything's so exciting. I mean, people take the mick out of me because I'm like, oh, so this is exciting and that's exciting, but learning to slow down. Oh my goodness, and how much would we have missed if we didn't look at those micro details? But again, we were talking about this earlier, Bryce. It's like we we tend to because we're all speaking to people that are looking at these information sources, we forget that there's a huge percentage of the population that don't ever see any of these things that we all see. Mm-hmm. But by us taking it on board and seeing it, that's gonna have an effect on how we behave and what energy we're putting out there, which is going to have a ripple effect to everyone, even if they're not watching the Fox News thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that reminds me of looking, oh, sorry, of looking at the world too with that microchism, that, you know, that detail, which we perhaps missed before. You know, we, we, we saw um, things happening and, and it actually wasn't reality or the truth or of what's really happening because we maybe glossed over things and we didn't look in detail at, at things. I mean, even, you know, when you think about, you know, child traffic and things like that, if you don't look closely at, at what's really happening underneath, you're going to skim past that. You're going to miss it. You're going to, you're going to, um, so I think that that ability to see things at a closer level is, is really important um, in order to be able to see the bigger picture more accurately. Yeah. So important. It's like even like, 
sorry, carry on. Well, with even with the, the hard stuff, like there's there, you know, like this weekend, I said I finally was able to like cry over a situation that happened in December because I was able to actually feel. So I wasn't in survival mode. I was able to actually feel a broken heart. I was able to feel the pain of betrayal and the sorrow that it brought with it. And there's something as horrible of a feeling as that is. I don't think I don't know anybody who really likes to cry and likes to be there, but there's beauty there. If you can lean into that. And that's what the micro does when we really start to look at things in a very, like looking at the nature, you're able to lean into these cracks. And it's like the more the heart breaks, the more the light comes in. And so the more we're able to look at even the darkness, the more the light yeah. can actually come in and there can be a friction and a change that happens. And so and that is the beauty of I love, down. I love you said that, Bryce. Bryce, that, that, that it's um, making that space to be able to feel um, the things that we don't necessarily want to feel, the, the negative things, the sadness. Um, I was the same as you. and um, Maybe it was a <laughs> global energy, but I had a good cry in the last couple of days as well about everything. And there wasn't anything specifically, but I just felt all this energy coming up to be released. And, and it's, it's, it's a great thing, isn't it? Because instead of holding it in your body and suppressing it or avoiding it or ignoring it, you, you're actually allowing yourself to transmute it and, and release it. And this is part of this whole process. It's so important. And, and, and human beings, like you say, will do anything to avoid pain. You know, we, we don't want to feel that. But actually that, that there is um, great beauty um, and presence in, in going into that space where you can feel things um, fully you're not you're not just partially feeling them but you're able to feel them fully because then when you feel them fully and and you release that it makes room for all the good stuff it's like if you numb if you numb the sadness and the pain and the grief then you'll also not be able to on the other end of the spectrum feel the joy because you'll be numbing that as well and so when you you allow yourself to feel the depths of the emotion and in it emotion is energy in motion and it flows and it changes and it moves all the time so when you when you go and feel the depth of that emotion on the on, on what we perceive as a negative side of the spectrum you're allowing yourself to feel that the, the great extremes of, of all the really good stuff that comes in and you know I, I find with, with a lot of, and it's not a judgment, but with what I've observed with a lot of antidepressants and things like that is it just puts a block on your ability to be able to go in and feel these things so that then you end up not feeling much at all. Yeah. Yeah, and recognising I think that, you know, there's a time and a place and to sort of, I, I had the same as you, it definitely must be global energy because Friday my body just crashed and it was purging in a more physical way. <laughs> Um, and I just had to just stop um, because my body just said enough. And, and, and whatever way, you know, we will get the signs. And I think what's really wonderful and what we've got in our friendship is just having the resources around you to know when you've got that backup support, even if it's not sort of physical for when you're ready, you know. So you, all of us have chosen this time where our bodies, our minds, our souls are ready to release certain things. And I think people respecting that for themselves, that, you know, you'll know when the time's right and, and support is out there for people for when it's right for you to process certain things. Yeah. The, 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 the energies of the sun, you know, are, are really um, powerful at the moment and, and the, the light encodings that are coming down. And scientists have been just showing in the last week that they've been finding high frequency um, solar emissions that they've never experienced before or seen before and they don't know how to identify them or um, explain them. And, and so this is also part of this shift that we're feeling and releasing all these emotions and things because we're releasing these really high frequency bursts of energy that we've never experienced before and they're dridging up all the um, um, uh, the unhealed you know soul wounding that's been within us and allowing it to come up and it's activating our dna in other ways to really help in the ascension so you know not, not only are we globally being um encouraged to release this but you know there's there's all these um energetic reasons why we're we're experiencing this as well yeah it's lovely well it's a lovely chat you girls um 
we're going to have to apologize to david what i am going to do is david cohen obviously everyone's links will be below i'll put the link to your rumble interview obviously medina's links will be below but david has released on his youtube channel david cohen music a really lovely new song i'm sure you like so it. good it's so good, good. <laughs> So I am going to also um, put the link to that. And then when we, David joins us, hopefully sort of within the next week, we'll, we'll let him play that and explain behind that because I find it's really good. It's really catchy and yes. following his passion with that. So thank you so much, ladies. Any other closing words before we finish? I just want to say my friends are so cool. You guys are so cool. David is so cool. Like, how many talented people are out there right now just doing their thing? And that is such a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. And even though David's not with us, like I'm proud of him for putting that out because, and for all everybody, for you both as well, putting all your work out, like it's, it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out like that. And, and with courage, there has to be faith as well. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, thank you, Bryce. It's beautiful to, to share. I really appreciate that you know i i think what i i find for it for me as well is it's separating the ego from putting myself out there because there's such a thing as a like a negative ego where you you know when when people make comments and things like that and you're putting yourself out there if you're too attached to your own ego you're going to block yourself <laughs> So it's like separating my ego from all this and saying, well, this is my mission. I've got to do it. And regardless of, you know, um, perceptions and, and my own, um, how my own ego, my negative ego is impacted, I just, I, I release and transmute that. And then I um, just do what I need to do to to be on my soul mission so so i think th and that is also a reflective of the whole ascension process which is transmuting negative ego and being able to release control and surrender into the divine flow so thank you <laughs> oh and i would just thank you like to thank you both and um on the subject of ego I've got lots more coming up about messages from the animals because they really really teach us um, uh, literally living examples of how to let go of that. Thank you so much to everyone who's watching. We all really, really, really appreciate anyone who takes the time to watch this because when we do, all our energies are mingling. They're all creating and we're co-creating together. And all three of us and David as well, we're really lucky, touch wood, um, to have really amazing listeners because we see so many positive comments where people are supporting each other and this is a new world that we're creating we're creating a world where we're going to put our energy into positive you know I'm sure our mothers have all said it if you can't say anything nice don't say anything at all and I just think it's you know you guys anyone who's watching this Virtually all of you are real examples of that. And every time you you take the time to say nice um, something nice to something uh, someone else, you are literally changing the world. So thank you so much, anyone who's watching. Thank you, it's ladies. Spiritual, thank you. spiritual family, isn't it? It's our yeah, spiritual, spiritual family. Is. <laughs> We're all just walking each other home with our dogs right with <laughs> yeah. well i will I'm say that I what we say in the south is if you can't say anything nice come sit beside me yeah <laughs> <laughs> as you say that are savage so, <laughs> so. i'll just say it with a look i can just turn someone to <laughs> thanks everyone and we will be back soon with david and we will give him more of the floor take care <laughs> bye guys <laughs>